guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm here to talk about another episode of Marvel's What If. After the awesome one we had last week with the zombie apocalypse, Marvel continues their hot streak with the great story between Tony Stark and Eric Killmonger. And we're brought back to the very beginning of the MCU in 2008 with Tony Stark being kidnapped by the Ten Rings. Only this time, he's saved by Killmonger. That was a spectacular entrance, seriously. The Ten Rings have reinforcements en route. We need to move now. Fine by me, Lieutenant Killmonger. What is that, German? This episode was really good. Putting these two together, they're such an unlikely pair. I mean, you have Tony Stark, the eccentric billionaire playboy who, at this time, was the selfish brat that didn't play well with others. And then you have Eric Killmonger, a man who's totally motivated by hate and loneliness and vengeance. I took life from my own brothers and sisters right here on this continent. And all this death, just so I could kill you. Just two total opposites of each other. But I love seeing these two interact with each other. It was so cool seeing Killmonger in Tony Stark's world with Pepper Potts and Happy and Rhodey in the Stark Mansion. And Michael B. Jordan reprised the role, which was awesome. I think he just fits, you know, the attitude, the, the sarcasm, the swagger. One of my favorite parts in this was uh, how he told off Obadiah. I uncovered plans to assassinate Tony Stark while on a deep cover operation inside the Ten Rings. Whoa, 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 whoa. there you have it, folks. <laughs> That's gonna be a wrap on this conversation. Yeah, yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Because those plans were bankrolled by Stark Industries COO Obadiah Stane. Tony, I... <laughs> I like how he did that, how he cut him off like that. He was like, yeah, yeah, you'd like that, huh? Matter of fact, that, that had to be the highlight of this episode. That was my favorite part of this episode. Just because Obadiah was the main antagonist in the first film, you know, he hired the Ten Rings to kidnap Tony Stark. So to see him get exposed so quickly by Killmonger, who is a much smarter person than he is, was satisfying, especially since people like Obadiah underestimate Killmonger. This was a really interesting story, and I think that this episode really uh, showcased Eric's skills a little bit more than Black Panther did. In this story, we see the more calculating side of Killmonger. You know, he's three steps ahead before the story even starts. And it's scary how clever he is, outsmarting Tony Stark, outsmarting General Ross and the Wakandans, even being successful in killing the Black Panther. This episode really shows off his skills. The dude is a threat, and given enough prep time and resources, he could be potentially an Avengers level threat. And that's saying something. But yeah, I like this one. I like this one a lot. I think the best episodes are the ones that take us back to the beginning of the MCU. Back in, you know, phase one where it all started. And there are so many nods to the early days of the MCU sprinkled in this uh, episode. You know, having General Ross dealing with Tony Stark's death was a nice touch since we know from the Incredible Hulk movie, Tony and Thaddeus knew each other. I mean, Tony created some sonic cannons for the army that they used on the Hulk. Just little nods like that sprinkled in made this an even more better episode. And this episode didn't really have any emotional depth to it. If anything, it just left me surprised at how uh, quickly Killmonger was able to take over and uh, just, you know, leave me thinking that, dang, if he did this in the main timeline of the MCU, the, the timeline that we know, uh, he would have, he would have really shattered things across the entirety of the MCU. By him saving Tony Stark from the Ten Rings, the world never knew Iron Man. He's, he's taking over Wakanda, starting a war with the U.S., and obviously the Wakandans are going to win that. I mean, he, he's really taken over. And it's like, just thinking about the future of this particular universe on Earth, it's like, dang, things are 
rude for these people. Also, it's like, man, for someone who is the rock of the MCU, Iron Man hasn't been doing good in this series. He's made three appearances so far, and in each episode he was in, dude was murdered. I guess the writers at the studio really aren't big fans of Tony Stark, but yeah. I liked it. And I liked how T'Challa and Killmonger got Tom to interact and talk about Eric's actions. It's, it's cool looking into a different universe, seeing things played out slightly differently. Guys, let me know what you thought of this episode of, of What If. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. The zombie episode is still my favorite, but this one was a really good one. I, I like this one a lot. Uh, leave your thoughts down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. And I just wanted to show y'all this uh, new t-shirt I got. I don't know if y'all can see this. It's a what if t-shirt and it has black, it has the watcher, of course. It has Black Widow, uh, Black Panther, T'Challa, and Star-Lord, uh, Steve Rogers from the first episode and that uh, Iron Monger suit that Howard Stark made him. And then it has Zombie Captain America, which I really like. Uh, and then at, right here, it has the monologue for everything that the Watcher says in the beginning of each episode. Uh, but yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. And if you want a shirt like this, I'll be sure to uh, leave a link in the description below. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.